Hi, welcome to the ECAM channel. This is Yuan. A couple of months ago, we went to Boston and attended MRS4 conference. At the conference, we were privileged to have invited Professor Hussam Asharif from Kim Amdoha University of Science and Technology for an interview. Professor Asharif is a distinguished and visionary scientist whose work extends beyond the confines of laboratory to impact industries. His research endeavors have spanned diverse areas, from advanced material synthesis to the development of cutting-edge technologies with transformative potential, from energy storage to electronics and water treatment. In today's video, he will talk about his suggestions for young scientists who are interested in the field of material science and electrochemical applications. Let's move to the interview. Could you please Hi. give us an interview of the research focus in uh, what you are specialized in? Okay. First of all, good morning to both of you, and thank you for hosting me. I'm really, really happy to sit down with uh, the new generation, the youngsters in this field, and, and talk about my experience. Uh, actually, I'm a material scientist. Uh, all my degrees were in material science, and therefore most of the, my research is focusing on trying to find uh, applications uh, for, for new materials. Mm -hmm. And so there are uh, two big themes in my group. Uh, we are trying to develop uh, nanomaterials for energy storage, uh, like batteries and capacitors, like yourselves, uh, and also electronics, because I have spent about 10 years in the industry. Mm -hmm. So this is an area that is still near and dear to my heart. So these are the two areas we are focusing on. Um, so you said uh, you spent 10 years uh, in uh, industry uh, semiconductors. In, is that a field that you started your research? Yes, uh, so when I first arrived uh, in academia at KAUST, mm -hmm. in the beginning I did the thing that I'm good at. Mm -hmm. And uh, so over time I, I realized that uh, energy is going to be a big theme uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the kingdom and worldwide. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I did actually is electrochemical capacity. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason I did that because actually I understood the electrostatic capacitor from my electronics mm -hmm. background very well. The physics is the same, mm -hmm. it's just yeah. it's a little bit slower. So it was easy actually as a material scientist uh, who understood the electrostatic capacitors mm -hmm. to actually start a program uh, in electrochemical capacitor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to recruit a very good uh, student from China and mm -hmm. a very good postdoc from India who had experience in this area and, and they came over I set up the lab and it was it was really a, a good uh, a good project to get into. We enjoyed it and got a lot out of it. That's wonderful. Yeah. And do you see your um, I guess background in semiconductor research or experience in industry help guide your research in energy storage? Uh, well, in, in general, being in the industry uh, is a very good thing. To be honest with you, uh, the reason is that number one. Uh, it gives you a perspective about uh, how the real world, world works. Yeah. 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 Uh, in academia, we always, myself included, we lose sight of this fact. We yes. are scientists, yes. uh, we love what we do, yeah. and when we start, we just get into, so it, into it, we want to understand it. And, but things like uh, the eventual cost of the material, the toxicity mm -hmm. of the material, the industries think more about these things mm -hmm. before they think about the science. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, people who have a chance to spend time in the industry uh, become more aware of uh, the, the, the meaning and the impact mm -hmm. and the, the, basically the, the long-term prospects of whatever project they work on. So I, I have enjoyed that. Another thing I have to say, uh, being in the industry also is a good uh, vehicle to uh, find jobs for my graduates. You know, <laughs> a lot of my students yeah. Yeah. actually went back to the U.S. and are working in, in the industry, uh, the semiconductor industry. And also, when you get projects in, in, in academia from industry, uh, as someone who has spent time in the industry, you're not overwhelmed. You know exactly what to expect. You know, uh, a funding agency like NSF have some expectations. A company have a totally different expectations. You know, you have to define uh, more specific milestones in the proposal. Uh, there is often a, a, a schedule uh, when you have to deliver, and uh, there's always restrictions on publications, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and also fights over IP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. Thank you. And a question that I had uh, is, for young scientists like us, we are like 
we do project with our advisors, but oftentimes we, like you said, we lose sight of the real uh, real world aspect of things. Like we don't know at, at the moment what the industry need um, and things like that. So, what are some ways that we can obtain this perspective for industries? Like, do yeah. you go to conference for that or? You uh, th that's a good question because many industries they just don't let anybody come in and see what they are doing. <laughs> so I, I think an undergraduate is a different story. Doing an internship as an undergraduate is definitely mm -hmm. something I, I would very strongly recommend. Yeah. I recommend it not only because you learn something, but also I think uh, discovering what you don't like is, is yes. even more important than discovering what you like. Yes. Yeah. So I would say uh, as an undergraduate and maybe a uh, in a master's degree, doing an internship is okay. Once you get into the mm. PhD, you know, it becomes hard because it's so yeah. demanding. You, yes. you yeah. So yes. I, I would say leverage, uh, one area is leverage undergraduate and maybe master's to do internship. Mm. But another area, if uh, let's say the project you are on is not funded by the industry, try to reach out to people in your group who are funded by the industry to see if you can collaborate with them because mm. this way you could establish connection with the industry. Maybe you could go to the project meetings, yeah. yeah, like that. Uh, also, when you go to meetings like MRS, sometimes there are industry talks. Uh, go mm -hmm. to them. Uh, yeah. And then also, actually, often online, a lot of uh, CEOs, a lot of CTOs mm -hmm. that actually give talks about their prospective fields. I, I myself still listen to those, believe it or not. That's wonderful. Yeah. Good to know. Thank you so much. I'm wondering how do we mission the electrochemical application field and uh, how will nanomaterials will help to explore more, uh, more possibilities in this field. Yeah, uh, I think uh, the future of electrochemistry and electrochemical application is very bright. Uh, actually, uh, there was a period, maybe 15, 20 years ago, where people thought electrochemistry was dead. Mm. But it has come back, and it has come back in a very big way. Yeah. Yeah. Very strong. And of course, uh, <clears throat> you know, among the leading uh, you know, markets, market drivers in this area is batteries. You yeah. know? Mm -hmm. Batteries is uh, one of the fastest growing uh, you know, businesses we have. And uh, the, I think some of the projections they say it's going to be a 500 million dollar market by 2050 or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure the number exactly, but it's going to be huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, if you think that uh, uh, today's projects, for example, uh, in portable electronics, everything has, has gone to electrochemistry, electrochemical devices, uh, the automobiles are on a very fast ramp up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the grid is not far behind. You know, there's uh, every day you hear about deployment in, in the grid. So, so. Mm -hmm. The growth is huge, uh, and uh, I, I actually tried to tell my son to, to study batteries, <laughs> and he refused. Uh, and I, I think uh, batteries uh, uh, are going to create a lot of opportunities, not only in making a battery and yeah. recycling in, in battery management system, electrical mm -hmm. engineers, mechanical engineers for thermal management. Mm -hmm. It's just going to invigorate the economy at, at many exactly. levels, at many fronts, yeah. many skills. Actually, yeah. the battery is quite complicated. I mean, when you look at the battery pack yes. in a Tesla car, mm -hmm. it's just not the material science or the chemist. Uh, the chem mechanical engineer has to figure out the, the, the heat management. Yes. The electrical engineer has to, you know, yes. uh, fast charging. Yes. So, so that's the thing. So the second thing is that uh, we are eventually are going to have to decarbonize the grid. You know, so so uh, ultimately, mo most of the projects with batteries today on the grid, mm -hmm. therefore, two three hours they are short duration. Because the grid is running on, uh, on fossil fuel anyway, yeah. it's just for peak demand. But ultimately, we want to to save the planet. We have to decarbonize the grid. This is even going to increase the demand mm -hmm. for batteries. Mm -hmm. And lithium-ion batteries may not be able to do it because it's expensive in that case. Mm -hmm. So we need the new uh, battery chemistries like the sodium-ion batteries and things like that. Yeah, uh, like that. So, yeah. so also alternative fuels is, is a very big feed. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. basically taking. Uh, you know, CO2 and turn it to something that's very useful. Right. Uh, nitrogen, oxygen, the, these alternative fuels are very good. And also another area, it's, it's not quite electrochemistry, but uh, you know, these fossil fuels, if, if we don't use them, we have to do something with them. So figure out the chemical, electrochemical mm -hmm. processes to turn them into variable products. Yeah. It's a very good area. Yeah. 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 Or, oil to chemicals. Yeah. What do you think about the emerging new technologies of terms of electrochemistry applications such as uh, water treatment or wearable devices and also including sensing. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, as a material scientist, I'm biased. I think the most important thing is the material. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Actually, it is also the most difficult thing, in my opinion, you know, because once you have uh, uh, the sensing mechanism worked out, mm -hmm. uh, we are fortunate right now because today's electronics are mature. 
We have a lot of chips that we can buy off the shelf mm -hmm. with the casings, the packaging, mm -hmm. all of this is there, you know, and the circuit yeah. design is so sophisticated. You can do a lot on the computer. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, I, I think the material takes the longest time to develop. So think about a sensor, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you really have a material that is stable mm -hmm. and is sensing reliably that you developed in the lab, mm -hmm. making the sensor mm -hmm. and start using it actually, I'm not, I'm not taking away credit from electrical engineers. They already have done the hard work for us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think materials are the key ingredient for all of these applications. Without a material, there is no system. And so uh, that's why I think material science is, is an important topic. And it will continue to be an important topic. Yeah, definitely. And I think at the MRS, we heard about like the thirty-year rule. Like it takes thirty years for like a new material to be uh, mm -hmm. discovered, then developed to exactly. that stage. But also, we should reflect on the last twenty years. I think we have been very lucky. In my opinion, this has been the golden age of material science. You know, and let yeah. me tell you why. Yeah. So many new materials, starting with graphene, two-dimensional materials, yeah. MOFs. Cuffs, quantum dust, they just got the Nobel Prize, yep. magazines, yeah. perovskites, mm -hmm. conducting polymers, semiconducting polymers, mm -hmm. functional yeah. polymers, and all in the last 20 years. Yeah. Yes. So we have been so lucky as material scientists actually, so much to discover and so much to do. That's the right, and so yeah. many applications to dive into. Yeah. Yeah. And there is still space for us to explore. Yeah. There is a lot of space. Yeah. I want to add one question on the microelectronic because that seems <laughs> to be a, like a junction between your research. Do you envision like the electrochemistry being applied to the microelectronics field? Uh, it depends on the on the application. I mean, if you look mm -hmm. at the the hardcore silicon industry, mm -hmm. uh, the chemistry they use is kind of wet chemistry. And they, mm -hmm. they really do electrochemistry because electrochemistry in this phase is a little bit hard to also to to, to scale up. You know, at the yeah. Front yeah. Yeah. So. But electrochemistry is gonna play a, a, a big role in CO2, uh, you know, basically trying to save our planet, and it already is doing in, in yeah. alternative fuels, the area we just talked about a minute ago. Mm -hmm. um, the electronic industry, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, in the last, uh, you know, a couple of years, it has become clear to people that uh, it's almost a national security <laughs> issue to have uh, an industry. Yeah. yeah. And so I think what we're gonna have is basically uh, maybe democratization of the fabrication of electronics, Europe's gonna ramp up, China's gonna try, mm -hmm. and the US is gonna, mm -hmm. yes. uh, and the new areas that are gonna come up, uh, why I mentioned in my talk actually this morning, I think uh, wide band gap semiconductors are gonna mm -hmm. take off in a very big way. This is yeah. for high power applications, harsh mm -hmm. environment, space. Mm -hmm. uh, this is for the EV industry mm -hmm. that is coming up. Uh, so, so areas like this are gonna be very hard. Quantum computing also is a lot of uh, MRS on quantum materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so electro, uh, electrons is gonna diverge from just silicon, you know. Uh, so electrochemistry can can play some role, you know, but but I don't think in, 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 yeah. in a very big, you know. It would be yeah. better in alternative fuels, CO two reduction, uh, batteries. This is where it will it will gotcha. dominate. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. As a well, as a very seasoned uh, mentor, yeah. um, so do I have, do you have any advice for? Uh, young scientists uh, that want to get into the material science or energy field? Yes. So first of all, let me give a generic advice and yeah. then give a more specific to materials. Yeah. Uh, first advice is that your network is your net worth. Your network is your net worth. So that okay. means that I, I would like, that's what I tell my children too, mm -hmm. is that I would like them to have as many friends and as many connections as they could possibly have. Mm -hmm. And this is more important now because a lot of people are doing Zoom meetings. And, mm -hmm. and so, so the chances for the young generation to build personal relationship like my generation did is, is less than before. Mm -hmm. So you need to be careful. You don't just become like a, have a virtual network. So mm -hmm. uh, go into meetings. Uh, don't be shy. A lot of the young people are kind of shy. Uh, walk up to the person. Believe yeah. me, that other people want you to talk to them. And after just the first two sentences, you immediately realize that you both wanted to talk to each other. Yeah. So build that network in your class, in your university, in your job, whatever it is, go make a contact list and you know basically sync it on your phone and you, you can never lose them. So this is not advice number one. Number two, uh, let's talk about graduate level students. Yeah. Yeah. So, Make sure you pick the right person to work with, not just mm. the name of the university. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I would rather go to a, a second tier university with a well-known person mm -hmm. than with the first tier that with the 
person who is really not, not well known. This is number mm -hmm. one. And number two, uh, if you look at Yuri, and, and actually I imitated Yuri in one thing, you know. So Yuri uh, has, has invented these materials, mm -hmm. and what he did very well, I think, is reached out to people who have expertise that he does not yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And capitalize on this win-win situation, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. as a result, he has achieved spectacular results. Mm -hmm. uh, I somewhat did the same thing at Kaust. Actually, when we got into the magazine, we are giving it to some 25 professors at Kaust. Wow. Because I told my students up front, you know, this is, a, let's make this a win-win situation. You know? yeah. so, so I think uh, yeah. that thinking about uh, collaboration in that way, uh, not a zero-sum game that if I win, you must lose. No, mm -hmm. basically we both can win. If, if in science, this is how it should be. This is another advice uh, I can give. And also you need to read a lot. Yeah. The people who read more, they will succeed more. You know, So you yeah. better be reading all the time. You cannot stay behind. <laughs> I appreciate your time. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you have any thoughts, welcome to leave it in the comment section. The videos in our ECAM channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, like, and share our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.